Hello, thank you for joining me today for Real Estate Religion EU. My name is Dr. Sylvia Black, licensed real estate broker with affordable homes and apartments. And I'd like to thank you for joining me today. Today I'd like to talk to you on the subject of Don't Let the Valley Fool You. Okay, and I'm coming to my book, Valley of Dry Bones Live Again, Rebuilding the Walls of Your Torn Down Life. And it's available on the website at the bottom of your screen. And my name is Dr. Sylvia Black, and I'd like to thank you for joining me today. Now I'm going to come, with you, come at you from a scripture that's found in the book of Joel 3, uh, Joel 2, 25 to 27, Amplified Version, and it reads thusly, And I will compensate you for the years that the swarming locust has eaten, the creeping locust, the stripping locust, and the gnawing locust, my great army which I sent among you. You will have plenty to eat and be satisfied. And praise the name of the Lord, your God, who has dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be put to shame. And you shall know without a doubt that I am in the midst of Israel to protect and bless you. And that I am the Lord your God, and there is no other, and my people will never be put to shame. May the Lord have a blessing to the reading, hearing, and doing of his mighty, powerful, and magnanimous word. Now, a valley can be a low place. It can be a lonely place. When you feel like you're at your lowest common denominator and all you see is ruin, similarly to what happened when Jerusalem was totally annihilated and there was nothing left but valley of dry bones. Okay, an empty vessel, a place of ruin, desolation and emptiness. It can make you feel like there's nothing left, okay? Uh, the valley did look like a hopeless situation in that case, but for Jerusalem. And the valley can, if you let it, look like a hopeless situation for you. But don't let the valley fool you. You look around you and all you see is just the opposite of what you dream of. Day in and day out, the valley uh, of dry bones becomes more real for you. Each and every day, your valley becomes your comfort zone. Not saying that you enjoy being in the valley. It's just that now your valley is comfortable for you. The valley is familiar to you, and as a result, you get used to living in the valley. And the valley is all you know, or is it? You settle into the valley, and now the valley is your permanent place of residence. You resign yourself to believe that the valley of dry bones is what it, this is what it looks like. It's, it is what it looks like. This is what you say to yourself. You fear to explore what is beyond the valley because you've been in the valley for so long. You allow the valley to consume you. You have learned how to get around in the valley. You've made friends in the valley. And you don't know what is beyond the valley and you're too afraid to venture out and find out. No one else in the family has survived the ruin of the valley and moved on. So how can you? You had no training, no encouragement, no reinforcement on how to come up out of the valley of dry bones. So you stay there in that hopeless, wretched situation. You're ex you've accepted the valley in your mind as your permanent residence, your home. And now you look out at the world and you see yourself from the valley that you have settled into. A narrow prism of your own thinking. All those negative thoughts came from you? Or did they? Those thoughts did not come from God, we know that for a fact. Those thoughts came from the devil. That's where they initiated from. And then he, the devil convinced you to believe in the devil's lies. The devil is trying to make you think that you have nothing going for yourself. He's trying to make you think that there's you have nothing to live for, nothing left to hope for. And all those lies are from the devil. And we know that the devil is the great, 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 great grandfather of deceit. What are you going to do in the valley? Are you going to use the valley as an opportunity for a better change? Or are you going to use the valley as an opportunity to complain and bicker and become angered 
at what you see and not what you know. That's why we have a God to turn to. He can do anything but fail, and if you trust Him and believe in Him, and in your own ability, of course, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Know that we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. Know that greater is He that lives within me than He that lives within the world. Know that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, and eyes have not seen and ears have not heard, nor entered into the hearts of those who love the Lord and are called according to His purpose. With all this information that you now have about the goodness of God and His mercy of the Lord God, uh, our Father, who we serve, who is mighty and powerful and stronger and more uh, powerful than the valley, staying in the valley is not an option anymore. Okay, because God can help us come up out of the valley of dry bones. These positive thoughts coupled with scripture will propel you, it must propel you, it has to propel you to get up out of the valley with your bad self. Put one foot in front of the other and soon you'll be walking up out of the midst of the valley of dry bones. Don't let the valley fool you. You will leave, you will not leave those valley of dry bones. Oh God, this computer is something else. Okay, uh, here it is. You will leave those dry bones behind you now and walk into your divine and perfect future. You'll start afresh, begin again. All you have to do is ask God for another chance, like I did. Another chance to get it right, another chance to do what you need to do so that you can become all that you were created to be and not die in the valley. How many of y'all know that God is a God of many chances? We all mess up. We all screw up at one time or another, even the best of us. No one is perfect. He who is without sin, let him cast the first stone. Some people mess up their lives on a regular basis. Okay, some of us mess up on a regular basis. Uh, some that's the norm for some people. But don't beat yourself up about it. Don't beat yourself up about it anymore. Just because you didn't get it right the first time. You may have put yourself in the valley. You may have done it to yourself once again. Or you may have allowed others to put you there. Nevertheless, you are there in the valley of dry bones. And you're letting the valley, you're letting your surroundings make you think that this is it. Okay, don't let the valley fool you, my brothers and sisters, because it will and it can very easily creep into your mind and get you thinking like the devil. The valley can be a place of wretchedness, despondency. You can feel abandoned by those you love. Like they let you down, but they didn't care about themselves, so how can they care about you? You see, the valley is something negative, like bleakness, desolation, and isolation. So you resign yourself to this negative thinking that resounds in your mind. You're just letting the devil whisper sweet nothings in your ear over and over and over again. Okay, we need to look at the valley as an opportunity to change, as an opportunity to move on, to get it right, to do it different so that you don't end up in the valley again. God uses situations and circumstances in our lives as to bring about an opportunity for change because everything must change. Your valley will either change for the better or it will change, change you for the worse. And your change will depend on how you feel or how you react to the valley that you're in. Whether you stay there and wallow in your uh, wretchedness or whether you decide to get up and get out of that dejection and stop believing the lies of the devil. Your valley is a chance to make things better for you and the next generation, your family, your friends. God can be putting you in the valley as a test to see if you got what it takes to come out. Change requires work. Work in rebuilding the walls of your torn down life. Nothing comes easy. Anything that you want, you got to fight for it. And you can't give up the fight, you got to keep on fighting. 
Don't let the valley fool you, my brothers and sisters, because it can and it will. The valley can make you think that your life has come to its conclusion. Your ruin, your desolation can cause you to become discouraged, hopeless rather than hopeful. As long as there's breath in your body and God is keeping you alive for a reason, it's not just take not just to take up space. We all have found, uh, we all have found, and we must find a purpose in our lives. How you find a purpose is connecting with God. Not my will, but thy will be done. We're all in the valley for a reason. Everybody's in the valley at one time or another. You may be in the valley and don't even realize you're in the valley. But most likely the valley that you're in is not for you to become comfortable in, but for you to learn from and to grow and to move on. Your learning will now help you to make, uh, help you not to make the same mistakes that you made before. Okay, and then the next time you end up in the valley, or you get put in the valley, you know how to come out. You won't stay in the valley as long as you are staying in there this time, or the last time, because you know how to come out. You'll know what you need to do in order to get up out of that valley of dry bones. Once you move on and out of the Valley of Dry Bones, now you can be an example for other people. You can be an example for other people and you can say, hey, look, look at what I've accomplished. Look at what I've done. I didn't come up out of the valley. Yeah, here, let me help you up out of the valley too. Okay, let me reach down and I, I, can, I can help you. I'm, I'm gonna help you come up out of the valley. I'm gonna show you how I did it so you can do it too. I'm not going to leave you behind. I'm going to help you, but I got to come out of the valley first. I can't help you if I'm still in the valley. I got to fight for my survival. And, and I, I'll come back and get you. I promise I'll come back and get you, but I got to come up out of the valley first. I have to get me, my family, and then I will help you up out of the valley. I'll show you how I did it then you can do it too, if you want to. So now you're up out of the valley. Instead, now you've come into agreements with God. Instead of believing the lies of the devil and allowing the devil to whisper sweet nothings in your ear. As a result of coming into agreement with God, now you're going to learn. You've learned from your mistakes. And you can see the mistakes that you've made because you, you couldn't see it as long as you were stuck in the valley. That's what usually happens. You can't see beyond the valley as long as you're in there, but once you change your thought pattern, the way you think, make a decision, say, I'm coming up out of the valley. Remember the prodigal son? He changed his mind. He was eating slop with the, with the pigs. He was down there with the pigs in the pig's pen and whatnot. And the Bible says he came to himself. That means he changed his mind. He had a new thought pattern coming. He made a decision. He says, nah, I'm not going to live like this no more. I'm not going to stay in the pig's pen. I'm not going to eat scraps with the master's dog no more. I'm coming up out of this mess. And that's exactly what he did. He came to himself and he went to his father. He had resigned himself to believe that he was going to be a servant. He said, I'll just work at the lowest job that he has, just as long as I can get up out of this valley. I can get up out of this pig's pen. I'm tired of eating scraps with the master's dogs. I want to be the master of my own table now, in the name of Jesus. So I come to myself, and when he came to himself and he went to his father, surprisingly his father was so happy to see him. He greeted him with open arms, and he had a feast to celebrate his son's return. Quite the opposite of what he had thought was going to happen, but all because he made a decision that he was not going to stay in the valley no more. Okay, same thing with uh, when Joseph had a dream. Remember when they made him interpret the dream? Well, they didn't make him, but you know he interpreted the dream. And 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 sometimes we can learn a lesson from that too, and so that we can. You know, hold on to what God blesses us a little bit more. You know, instead of us spending it all, you know, on, on immediately, you know, hold on to it. You know, during the seven years of plenty, put some of it aside, save, you know, for those seven years that may come after that there'll be 
lack. So when the lack comes, when it dries up, when the, when there's no rain or whatever, and you know your 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 um, your land dries up and you're not fertilizing, you know, and it's it's just uh, call it like it is. When the money's funny and the change is strange, okay, then you'll have saved up during those years of plenty, those months of plenty. You say, I'm gonna put this aside, I'm gonna save this, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna spend frivolously, I'm gonna get what I need, and that's gonna be that. And I'm gonna go out there and I'm gonna still work and I'm gonna do what I gotta do, and I'm gonna fight for my survival. But we're gonna fight for our survival, we're gonna do it together. And then when the, the time comes when it dried up, or when you ain't got no job, or what have you, or when the money's funny to change the strange, you got the money's not coming in like it's supposed to. Now you got some savings, so you can you can say, hey, I I'm glad I didn't spin up like a fool, you know. Now God can bless me with more because He knows I'm responsible with the little that He gave me. It may be a little bit to you, but it's a lot to somebody else. But still praise Him anyhow. Say, hey, now I know God knows I'm responsible with that. He see you because you see how I handle that. So now God, I know you're going to bless me with more. I know you are because I'm going to go out and work for it. I'm not just going to sit back and wait for it to fall from the sky. I'm going to keep on doing what I do, keep on keeping on. Yeah, you got to sit back and relax. You got to chill, you know, get something to eat, relax for a little while, get yourself together, and then get up, back up with your bad self. When you don't stay stuck in the valley, because the valley will fool you, baby, if you let it. But don't let the valley fool you. Okay. I had decided when I was in the valley that I was not going to wallow in my valley of dry bones. I was coming out no matter what it looked like or no matter how hard it was going to be. Just like the prodigal son when he decided, he said, I come to myself. I changed my mind. He said, I changed my mind. I'm not going to stay wallowing in the pig's pen anymore. But uh, the, the, the scripture that I read about God says he's going to restore to us the years that the canker worm and the locust have, have eaten from us. Locusts are well-known insects which commit terrible devastation to vegetation in other countries which it visits. In the east it is especially prevalent and at times commits such ravages as to produce famine and render district almost uninhabitable. That's what people would try to do. They will take, they want to take it all. They don't want to leave you with nothing. They want every penny of it. They didn't work for it, but they want everything that you got for one reason or another. They don't want you to have nothing. Okay? Not only will he restore what the, the locusts have eaten away in our lives or what the people have taken, what, you, what the devil has stolen, but God promises that we will have more than enough. We will have plenty, never have to worry about running out and there will be nothing to be ashamed of. You look around, look at what you got in your hand. Remember the story of Moses when he, uh, uh, he went after Moses had been in the, had to run from uh, being an Egyptian and had to go back and live as a uh, Hebrew. He didn't know what he was, a Hebrew or Egy Egyptian or Israelite. But the man was 80 years old when God decided to use him again. Don't sit there and look at me all stupid. Some of y'all still crazy as a bed bug. Y'all retired and still got your, ain't got your mind right. Come on now, somebody talk to me. <laughs> okay? But don't let the valley fool you. It's time to come up out. No matter how old you are, no matter what, where you are in life. Do it now. Do what you got. That's what famous Amos said when he started handing out his cookies. He would give out cookies for five years. He just, women said, where are my cookies? Where are my cookies? Just give out the cookies. And eventually, what happened? Man became a millionaire. And what was his theory? Start now with what you got. That's what God asked Moses. He said, what's in your hand? Because Moses was saying, hey, I can't, I, I can't do it. I stutter. You know? That, that proves to you and me that God uses the least of us to get the greatest job done. He was humble. He says, the meek shall inherit the earth. That's what the Bible says. The meek shall inherit the earth. Not the greedy. Not the unrighteous. Not the haughty. 
you know, uh, the, the humble, the meek. Okay? And so he said, he told them, then when, when Moses made an excuse, and then God said, what's in your hand, Moses? And that's what God is asking us, what's in your hand? What do you have? What did I already bless you with? What do you have right now that you can do something with? Well, then let's get started. Do something with what, what I gave you. And stop crying about the fact that you ain't got nothing. Okay, praise the Lord for his wondrous restoration in your valley of dry bones and not be humiliated or embarrassed. You won't feel guilty. You shouldn't have to feel guilty. Don't feel guilty now. Don't be humiliated or embarrassed about anything. Okay, God blessed you with it. You know, you don't have to flaunt it or brag about it or talk about it. Keep it to yourself. But use it for your benefit and keep on keeping on. Don't let nobody turn you around. Okay? God is not through with you yet. Don't complain about the valley either. Instead, talk to the valley about how big your God is. You know, talk to the valley. Talk to that house and say, you know, talk, talk, talk to that light bill that you can't pay. And tell that light bill, you a liar, light bill. You know, you lied to me. <laughs> you know, talk to that job that you just got fired from. You a liar, job. You lied to me. You know, talk to your finances. Talk to your health. You know, talk to inanimate objects, but don't do it in front of nobody because they put you away. You see, in the Bible, Jesus talked to a donkey, right? He talked to a couple of, he talked to a tree. You know, we're going to start talking to some things. Talk to your money. You know, tell the devil, get your hands off my money, devil. In the name of Jesus, right? Now get your dirty, filthy hands off of my money. Get out of my house. Go. And he has to obey because he's a spirit. He's under our feet. God commands him to obey us. He makes, he, he, that's because that's the, the, the way it works. We have to, God, Jesus is at the right hand of Jesus. I, I mean, uh, Jesus is at the right hand of God. Right? In order to get to God, we got to go through Jesus. That's the privilege that Jesus now has. That's, that's, that's the the requirement that is not necessary in order to get to God as a result of Jesus dying on the cross and being resurrected three days later by God. Okay, we have to go through Jesus to get to God. So Jesus now sits at the right hand of God. We sit at the right hand of Jesus and the devil is under our feet. So whenever we tell the devil to get lost or get your hands off my finances, devil in the name of Jesus, and I say all oh, the beasts of the fields, all the workers of iniquity and all your evil doers in the name of Jesus, Get your hands off my finances. You know, now. And go. Release them. Let them go. Let it go. You know, talk to your money. Talk to the money you got. Talk to the money you want to have. Look at your bank account, baby, and declare. Prophesy, declare, and decree over it. Thank God for what you don't see, but what you believe in. What does it say? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do all things. That means we have the ability to do all things, right? Including come up out of the valley and dry bones. Put two feet, one foot in front of the other and just keep on walking till you're walking away from those valley of dry bones. Step, step over them. Step over the valley of dry bones and then when you step over there, crush the devil with the other foot. Step over the dry bones with this foot and then crush the devil with that foot. You know? Stop eating scraps with the master's dogs. Dare to dream, dare to, you know, allow yourself to think of, of things that you were too afraid to think of before, to hope, to hope again, you know, to say, hey, you know what, I'm coming up out of this valley of dry bones, I will live again, you know what I mean, prophesy over your life what you want it to be, talk to God about it, brag about God, you know, and, and come into agreement with Him, praise Him, worship Him. Thank him for it already while it's, while it's still daylight. Because when nighttime come, you know, nobody can praise him then. That's figurative. Okay. But praise him during the daylight. Praise him now. Praise him every day. That's what I do. I praise him for his wonderfulness, his magnificentness. Praise him for the way he has already kept me and brought me up out of the muck and the miry clay. Come on, somebody. 
Tell your valley how much stronger your God is over your valley. That God is not through with you yet. That he will show up and he will show up when you least expect it. All the odds may have looked like they was against you, but they're not. They just look like they're against you. That's a mirage. The devil was going to and fro like, a, like a, a lion. And we know lions are animals, right? That means that they don't have the ability to reason. Humans have the ability to reason. So let us get up out of the muck and miry clay, stand up, and just start walking. Make a decision like the prodigal son did. And he says, I'm coming up out of this mess, man. Forget this. I'm not staying eating pig slot no more. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to go back to my father, and I'm going to humble myself. And his father welcomed him with open arms and had a feast, and was so glad to see his son, and didn't throw his mistakes in his face. Isn't that wonderful? Your situation is just a test. It's only a test. If it had been an actual emergency, you would have been instructed as to when to pray. There's never a situation or circumstance that God cannot or will not have victory over. And this situation is no different. Don't let the valley fool you, my brothers and sisters. God is not through with you yet. Nothing is too big or too hard for, for God. If you trust Him and believe Him, God is more powerful than anything and He can do anything but fail. Tell your valley how strong and how wonderful and powerful God is. Don't complain about the valley. Instead, talk to the valley about your God. Brag on God and diminish the valley. Well, I want to thank you for joining me today for Real Estate Bridge and You. My name is Dr. Sylvia Black, and I ask you to join me next time when we talk about some more interesting topics. I ask you to holler the sister. Peace out. See you next time. Thank you.